All right, everybody, we're back with more Berserk reviews this week. Feels good to be back, guys. And honest, honestly, it's it's refreshing because uh, I wasn't a, I wasn't thinking about you know Berserk and Toriko and everything uh, for a whole week. Let my mind recover, and now I can come back with some uh, my thoughts and in depth. Uh, thoughts on what happened in this chapter now obviously I'm gonna be doing these five days a week as I stated in my update video so hopefully you guys are okay with that uh, basically in this chapter we learn more about Griffith now about his past rather than Casca but obviously Casca's past is intertwined with Griffith's as well uh, basically we learn how you know Casca felt about Griffith how the rest of the band of Hawk felt about Griffith you know like he was a miracle basically you know uh, they were fighting by his side, this, that, and the other thing. Uh, but then, at one point, their path got crossed with this lord, who apparently had a penchant for young boys. He liked young boys or teenage boys. Uh, we see these pleasure slaves in his uh, kingdom, in his castle. Um, and it's pretty sick, and it even bothered Casca because she realized she was almost uh, put down to that level, you know, with that noble who bought her in the previous chapters, in her flashbacks. So it kind of hit home a little bit with her, I think. But obviously Griffith is the reason why she's no longer in that type of situation, uh, or never even reached that situation in general. Uh, she says, you know, she went. her whole life changed when she met Griffith, you know. She went from enduring to fighting to succeed. Everything changed, and she thanks him for that. Now, there's one particular scene in this chapter that really, really made me uh, go, wow. You know, I was surprised by it. I didn't think I'd see this. I didn't even know if we were going to get any kind of past for Griffith. But then we start to see his past a little bit, and I did not... Uh, expect to see something of this nature. Um, he finds this kid. There's a boy. Nobody knows his name. But Griffith remembered that this toy knight um, is this kid's to uh, toy. He had it on the battlefield. And this kid died. And Casca had never seen Griffith in this way. So somber, you know, sad, whatever. Um, saying that he remembers this boy looking up to him, looking at him like he's some hero in a story, you know, and he starts to wonder, you know, did he die because he was enamored by his dream, or did the dream end because he died, or did he die for Griffith's dream, you know, Griffith is wondering all this, um, and that was the first time Casca started to look at Griffith differently, and when she goes to look for him, She's calling out his name, and she sees him with his shirt off, with the bayonet around his neck, and that lord, that pervert, you know, that 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 pervert lord, comes walking out. And the next day, we see Griffith in the lake, cleaning himself, trying to get rid of the feeling that he had, you know, sort of how like uh, someone would do after they were violated, you know, they were raped. They go to the shower, which is the wrong thing to do, if anybody knows, but. They go to the shower, and they try to clean themselves because they feel dirty. They feel violated. But you see Griffith in this nature. And Casca at first questions him, but then says, okay, it was a war meeting. And Griffith tells her, no, you're absolutely right. What you've seen is what you've seen. You know, there's nothing more to it. And we learn why he basically seduced this lord um, for money, basically for money. We see what extent Griffith will go to to achieve his goals. And... To me, you know, he doesn't have any kind of sexuality. He's neither homosexual or heterosexual. He will do what he has to do to achieve his goals. If that has to be sleeping with some pervert old man, you know, lecherous old man, if it has to be sacrificing somebody, he'll do what he has to do to achieve his goals. He explains to Casca, oh, Casca goes, well, why did you do that? Do you feel about bad about that boy? And he explains, I have no remorse, regrets, I don't feel like it's my fault when my soldiers die, you know. He explains that every time he goes to battle, his soldiers die, but he doesn't feel bad because they chose to walk that path themselves. However, he feels it's wrong, or at least this is what I gathered from it, he feels it's wrong that all these people, you know, he's building his dream on, these, on his soldiers' corpses, but what right does he have to remain clean in the whole process, he feels it'd be wrong if he didn't, if he didn't, like, you know, dirty himself in the process of achieving his goals. He wants to be there forefront and center with his troops to achieve his goals. And 
you know, he said, you know, should I sacrifice hundreds of my soldiers or should I seduce a lecherous old man to get the war funds we need to continue growing the Band of the Hawk? And obviously for Griffith, the solution that was the simplest and most efficient was the latter, you know, seducing this lecherous old man. Now, I agree with him to an extent. Uh, would I sacrifice my, uh, you know, would I, would I basically put myself in that situation and sleep with a lecherous old man? Probably not. Uh, but, you know, I'm not as devoted and motivated to a goal like that as Griffith is, you know. This is also a fantasy story. So that's basically where he's coming from. He is, he'll do whatever he has to do to achieve his goal. And, of course, these are just my own thoughts, guys, what I feel about uh, what happened in this chapter. And, you know, he actually starts digging into his skin, and it's like he's zoned out while he's saying this, you know. Uh, in fact, you know what, let's, uh, let's, let's bring that page up because it was, it was very interesting. He says, but for hundreds, thousands of lives to hang in the balance and myself alone, not to be unclean, what I want won't enter my grasp, grasp so easily as that. So he realizes that he has to become unclean as well, along with sacrificing his own soldiers in battle to achieve his goals. He's a realist. He real and you know, he realizes he's not going to just stand in the background and let his soldiers, the band of the hawk, do his dirty work for him. You know, he goes it's because they themselves chose to fight. That's just the way I am. But if for their sakes, for the sake of the dead, if there's something I can do, that thing is to win. I'll keep winning to fulfill my dream to which they clung, putting their lives on the line. My dream can only be realized by building upon their corpses. It's a blood-smeared dream after all. I have ne neither regret nor remorse about that, but... And then he says that, whatever. So basically, you know, he's saying that to honor the fallen, he has to continue the win. And to continue the win, he needs war funds. So he slept with this lecherous old man to get the money to expand the Bane of the Hawk, to get more, you know, weapons, get more horses, get cavalry, get rations, whatever, to continue winning, to almost, like, say that their sacrifices, his troop's sacrifices wasn't in vain. And I, I like that about Griffith, but I feel like that in general could be almost like a self-destructive path because it has to do something to your mentality, you know what I mean? It just has to. I really don't know how to explain it. But then Casca says, you know, she wants to be by his side. She wants to be his sword. So Casca's very loyal to Griffith. We've seen this since we were introduced to the characters. But now we're learning why she's so loyal to him. And I really enjoyed seeing more insight on what goes on in Casca's brain. Why she does the things she does. And I'm interested to see if we're going to get more of Griffith and Casca's uh, past. Overall, not a bad chapter, guys. Did enjoy it, and like I said, I was shocked to see Griffith sleeping with that old man, but it just opened my eyes even more to what extent this dude will go to to achieve his goals. But uh, let me know your thoughts on my thoughts, guys. Let me know your thoughts on the video, on the chapter. Like the video if you feel I deserve it, and if you enjoy my content, go ahead and hit the subscribe button to see more of my videos. Um, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will catch you in the next Berserk review.